All right. All right. So back again. We're second run through here. Now, the last segment, we had Shane Mahoney. Uh, the question that he was answering at the event I was at on October 24th over at MSU it was talking about getting kids involved in the outdoors and how to teach them conservation. Right, exactly. And he said go after the the younger people and get them started right off the bat. Yep, with you know puppy dogs, tadpoles, things like that, things that are simple in nature to get the, their attention and get them going. But uh, along with that, last week on the show, we did uh, introduce these two books here that I got in my hands. Yes, we talked about them last week. And uh, we actually got the author, Shasta, sitting on the, uh, the show with us. Hey, Shasta, how you doing? I'm good, guys. How are you? Doing good. Uh, sorry for all of the technical difficulties we had here. It's okay. I understand how it works. <laughs> well, you know, she had she kind of tipped us off when she texted us just a little bit before saying she had to reload Skype. Yeah. Then we found out we had to reload Skype. Yeah, so I don't know what's going on. Thanks, Skype. Yeah. <laughs> so... All right, so now that we're we're up and running, we got everything going here. We got you on the show. Um, you know, I ordered these two books from you about two weeks ago. Look through these things. These are for my grandson. We're gonna give them to him for Christmas. Um, all I can say is, wow, this is this is really cool. I mean, uh, tell us a little bit about yourself before we kind of get into the books and and, and how you kind of got started with with writing. Um, writing is actually relatively new to me. I'm actually a mental health therapist by trade. And um, a few years ago when we were, um, right after I had my son, my son is six now, but when he was about um, six months old or so, my husband and I were on our way to um, a pheasant hunt actually. And I started uh, talking to him by, I wonder if there's any hunting books out there for kids, you know, cause I'd really like to get some from my son, Wyatt. Right. And I looked around and there was nothing and, um, so I just started kind of thinking and um, ended up writing my own story. I wrote it for my son, Wyatt, just thinking that, you know, this would be a fun story to read to him um, since there's nothing else out there that I could find anyway. Right. And so I ended up writing it. And um, then actually Dr. Deer, Dr. James Kroll, um, he heard about it and uh, he asked if he could read it. And he read the manuscript and he thought it was great and said I needed to publish it. So um, I... Figured, I figured out the publishing process, and there, a few months later, White's first whitetail was born. Wow. Uh, that You know, when you said that there's nothing else out there, um, that's something that we've seen as well. There's You search for stuff. There's there's no outdoor books, hunting books for kids. So mm -hmm. um, There's things to me now, it seems like. Since I've started this process, mm -hmm. um, I've noticed more and more that are starting to pop up, which... Um, a few people have asked me, oh, that's competition. I said, no, actually, I give away over half of my books just because I want to get kids involved in the outdoors. So I think that's fantastic. The more books that are out there, the easier it's going to be for kids to get. So um, it is getting better, but it's still mm -hmm. surprisingly few, in, um, even at like Cabela's and places like that. So I'm, I'm hoping that's going to improve. That's nice. Um, you, so you, you talk about Dr. Deer, that he's endorsed this. I also see on here, uh, on on the, your second book, that you've got Eva Shockey as an uh, endorsing the book as well. I do, yeah. Um, she was. I basically when I wrote my second book, I was a little bit smarter uh, going into it because I doing White's first White's. I had no idea what I was doing. I was figuring <laughs> it all out on my own, and so I just got it printed. But going into Grace Goes Bow Hunting, I said, you know, I'd really like to get um, one of the female hunting celebrities to endorse it. Um, to help promote it for me. And I was like, I figure I'll just start at the top and, you know, go from there. And so I started with Eva Shockey, and um, she was fantastic to work with. She agreed to endorse it right as soon as she read the manuscript. And um, I didn't have to search anymore after that. Um, luckily, I do have a few other people who have endorsed it, um, people like Jana Waller and um, like Girls With Guns clothing line and, you know, people like that. So other people have supported it. Um, but Eva was the one that got the quote on the front of the book. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Very nice. Well, uh, we're showing a picture right now of, of Wyatt's first whitetail. Uh, you know, when you wrote this, I mean, you got a grandpa that takes takes uh, a grandson out, out hunting. And uh, the thing that, that really caught my eye about this was um, promoting the safety, the conservation, uh, you know, in the other book about practicing, things of that nature that, that to me, you know, 
I, I got to think that those are really important to you to get those points across. Yeah, I really wanted to find that balance between educating and also entertaining. And it's a very difficult line to walk. But um, so, yeah, I really wanted to talk about not just, you know, I don't want to, the media already portrays hunters as, you know, evil. All we want to do is go out and murder poor innocent animals, things like that. And so I didn't want a book where the kid just goes out, shoots 10 point, and that's the end of the story. Right. You know, I talked about how you have to go and you have to get your um, hunter's permit first, and then you have to learn your gun safety, and you have to wear your orange, you know, out in the field, and um, then also being an ethical hunter, not taking a shot that you shouldn't take, um, making sure that the, well, I wanted to go into, you know, making sure the animal's old enough and things like that, but I actually edited that part out. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, in the one here with Wyatt's first white tail, one thing I noticed, too, was, you know, um, I don't want to give too much away about the story, but there was a deer that wasn't on the property. It was on the other side of the fence, and, and you made that reference that you couldn't shoot that one. So, I mean, there's it, it, safety, ethics, practice, the whole nine yards, and that's what I really like about it. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm really glad that it turned out how it did. And the same with, like you said, with Grace Coast bow hunting. Um, I think with bow hunting, sometimes it's, not sometimes, it is just as important to have good ethics um, when you're shooting bow because it's so easy to just wound an animal when you're shooting mm -hmm. with a bow. And so that was one of the main points I want to get across there is, you know, don't take the shot unless you know it's, you can, get the animal down you know if you're only good up to 30 yards don't shoot past 30 yards right. and um and then that book the grace the main character is actually hunting with her mom and so it's two women going hunting which i think is um really great and it's actually the only book i know about there that's about a girl hunter so yeah i'm pretty proud of that one too now you've got uh one son you said and his name's wyatt my son wyatt yes okay uh, who did you base the, the other book off of? Somebody in the family by chance, or is it just somebody, the name you picked out? Um, the story kind of goes, um, reminds me of me and my mom, actually. Um, but I didn't want to put Shasta goes bow hunting. So <laughs> I, <laughs> I actually had a, um, a Facebook contest and asked my fans to help me name the character. And so people, you know, put in their entries, and then the one that got the highest votes won, and Grace won. Okay. So. Mm -hmm. Well, strangely enough, Danny it has a connection to both those names. I tell you what, it was so weird when Mike Mike gave me the envelope and I opened them up to look at these books. Grace and Wyatt, my my wife's has two cousins, and their two kids are named Grace and Wyatt. Oh, really? <laughs> it, it was it was really weird when you open up a book and you open up an envelope and you see two books and you see those two names, and it's not like they're very popular names to begin with. Right. So it's like wow. So. Well, that's pretty crazy. I hope you got a copy for them. Uh, you know what? I'm going to get them a copy and send it to them. <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. We're, uh, we're bumping up here on our next break. So uh, let's step outside. We'll take a quick break. We come back. I, I kind of want to uh, dive a little maybe into the, your background because uh, I know you're a hunter, and, and we'll, we'll talk a little more about that. And, we'll, and we got a couple questions for Shasta. Okay. All right. So we'll, we'll field those questions when we come back. We'll step outside, and we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Third segment of the show. Sitting here talking with Shasta, sitting talking about outdoor books for kids, and uh, you said we got a couple questions yeah, coming uh, from some of the listeners. Coming in from one of our listeners on Facebook Live, uh, from uh, my sister-in-law. A uh, what age groups Shasta are the books for? You know, I get that question a lot, and it, it is a good question, um, but I always have a difficult time answering it because. It depends. Like if you, if it's as far as reading level goes, I'd say it's probably about a third grade reading level, third fourth grade reading level. However, I know people who have got this for their newborns, and I know people who have got this for their twelve year olds. So it, because of the educational component, I mean, you can read to any age kid, and when they get older, they can read it to themselves. So I think it's good. I would say from zero to twelve is it would work for. Okay, that's awesome. You know, and that's a, like she said, it's a good educational tool. So at any age, really, if you know, getting it, reading it to them, or letting them read themselves, is a very uh, good thing to do. Well, that's that's what I, I bought it for my my grandson. Uh, I mean, he's 15 months old, so it, he can comprehend things, and he sees pictures. He he knows what a deer is. He knows what a duck is. I mean, he and bear. So he's starting to pick out animals and being able to talk about them, and he actually say say the words. 
And uh, so now I got that for him so he can sit in my lap and I can read to him. Right, exactly. That's the perfect age to start. So, what, you said you had a couple questions? Uh, no, that's the only one so far. Okay, all right. Well, well looking back, like I said, we know that you're a hunter. Uh, you, you shot a nice nine point this year on some property that, that you and your husband do a little work on. And uh, talk about maybe where that background came from of your hunting and, and where you're from originally. I'm originally from Idaho. Uh, my family grew up there and we moved all around the Northwest. We've lived in Oregon, we lived in Washington, uh, but mostly most of our hunting experience was in Idaho. My dad is, well, my mom and my dad, but my dad especially, he's the ultimate outdoorsman. He basically plans his life around August to December, he's hunting. He's <laughs> found a job where he only has to work those other, you know, whatever, six, seven months of the year. Right. And um, so that's what we did growing up. You know, in the summer times, we were out camping every single weekend, building trails, setting up tree stands. We structured our lives around hunting season. And then as, from as soon as I don't even remember when the first time I shot a gun, um, he started, we would just go out and whether it was shooting frogs with our BB guns or going and, um, oh, shooting deer. I mean, when shooting elk, I got my first elk when I was 14 and then it just kind of grew into more of an obsession after that. I didn't get to hunt too much in college because I, um, of volleyball and things like that. But then as soon as I graduated college and I met my husband and I, uh, he was a, what is a big hunter too. We started doing hunting trips together, and then when we moved out to northern Michigan, it was pretty much all downhill from there. It's I think my <laughs> obsession has only grown. It's, you're surrounded by it everywhere you go, which is great. <laughs> you know, that's one thing about Michigan is the tradition here. There, there is a great hunting tradition. Absolutely. Uh, I, I, it doesn't matter what you hunt, fish, trap, hike, camp, whatever. I mean, there's something to do here, I think, for everybody in the outdoors. There is. You know, it's that's what makes this place so great. Um, well, you, you shot your first elk at 14. That's I a, did. that's incredible. Bow hunt, rifle yeah. hunt? It was a rifle hunt. Yeah, my sister, my mom, my dad and my older sister and me were hunting in the mountains in Idaho and I actually got really lucky. It was the elk that we'd had our eye on because he was a beautiful six point on one side and on the other side he had this ridiculously long brow tine, uh, another tine, and then this huge club. And so we were calling him Bullwinkle, and we'd had our eye on him for about two or three days beforehand. And day one of rifle season, him and about six cows walks into the meadow that I'm sitting on, and I made a good shot, and he went down, and I'm like, what's so hard about this? You know? <laughs> this yeah. Easy. <laughs> yeah, I was complaining about. And, and then I find out it's not that easy. I just got really lucky. <laughs> right, right. Nice. Sometimes and luck is a lot of part of it. Hey, uh, you take what yeah. you can get when you can get them. You know, that's just the way it goes. I mean, it, even with deer hunting, it's that way sometimes, you know? Oh, oh, very much so. My husband always says that I'm one of the luckiest hunters he's ever seen. <laughs> hey, well, you know, you, sometimes you, you make your own luck. you got to be in the right place at the right time and have, have some sense about what's going on. So, you know, I think we make a lot of our own luck. So, that's true. But uh, so, so growing up out in Idaho, uh, you got married, you came to Michigan. I, I've never been to Idaho. I, I've seen pictures. I've heard people talk about it. But, I mean, compare and contrast. I mean, looking out there versus here, um, what, what's the biggest difference? I mean, besides the mountains, I guess. Oh, I was going to say mountains. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you can't say that. <laughs> they do have a lot of similarities. I mean, it's a lot of forest. and it, I'm talking about northern, Mich or northern Idaho now. Um, southern Idaho is a bit different. But northern Idaho, it's basically northern Michigan with mountains. And um, a lot more, Idaho has a lot of state land. It has, I think it has more state land um, than anywhere except for Alaska. And uh, so there's a lot, it's because of all the mountains and all the state land, you can basically go find places that other people have never set foot on because mm -hmm. you have to hike to it, of course. There's not roads everywhere like there is in Michigan. So I'd say that's probably the biggest difference is that in Michigan, you can pretty much drive almost anywhere, whereas in Idaho, you have to get most places on foot. Foot, horseback, I imagine they use a lot of horses too out there? Yeah, every once in a while, if you're lucky, you can get a four-wheeler side-by-side down it, but usually not all the way. And if you if you want to get a really nice elk, I mean, because everybody's going to be on the easy roads, so you have to go on the off-roads to really see the nicer stuff. Okay. 
You got to go way back. Right on. Way back. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, l- looking at, at at the past and being brought up in in a hunting family, and and I don't I don't like stereotyping people, but being female, it's it's totally different than everybody always thinks about the guys, the guys at camp. You know, I brought my daughters up. They're into hunting. They love it. But for, for maybe somebody out there that's listening, or maybe that has a daughter or a niece or granddaughter, and they're unsure about getting that person in the outdoors. What piece of advice can you give them about getting uh, getting the girls into the outdoors? I was really lucky because my mom was such a big hunter too. I think no matter what, because my my dad had three daughters and he was you know this big man's man. So I think mm-hmm. no matter whether my mom hunted or not, he would have got us into the outdoors. But having my mom there, too, and having her to teach me and her to show me, because women have a different way of teaching than men do, Mm -hmm. and girls have a different way of learning than boys do. And so I think her more than anybody, I was able to learn a lot from her. So I think speaking to the girls out there or young women who, or even grown women who want to get into hunting and just aren't sure how, I would say try and find somebody who can teach you. Try and find a woman in the outdoors who you know that hunts and you respect and you think probably has good ethics and teaching style and ask them if you know you can go with them and because i think more than anything just going and seeing what hunting is about it's it's so much different than what i think is portrayed by other people even but portrayed by some guys and you know Mm -hmm. deer camp for men would probably be very different from a deer camp for women so oh no absolutely absolutely yeah so i think just going and figuring out if it's something that you could enjoy something that you could get into and there's tons and tons of women's groups popping up all over the country um it's the fastest growing demographic i think i'm sure you've heard by now Mm -hmm. and so if if you don't know anybody personally that hunts get in contact with one of those organizations i mean something like um shoot like a girl is a great um organization that travels around the country and teaches women how to shoot and to become more comfortable with firearms and bows um and there's great um hunting clothing lines popping up you know whether it's proists or girls with guns even sitka has a line now um so i think you can even find stuff online is what i'm trying to say I absolutely gotcha. the, I gotcha. and, we, and that's a great point what you say is, is online it just opens up the whole entire world to the availability of it it really does yeah some of my i don't really have that many friends local who hunt um but i've met a ton of women online um hundreds of women online that i'm facebook friends with that i've gone on hunts with them i guided a um woman on a bear hunt this year actually and it's so you do develop kind of a sisterhood and women in the outdoors do tend to be very supportive of each other which is really great that's awesome and and were you successful in in getting a bear we were yep on night one <laughs> wow very nice not bad at all can you guys for us <laughs> yeah I was say, oh, wait, hold on <laughs> Uh, you can get a bear tag there's no bear tags in michigan anymore <laughs> oh well you know danny and i actually we've, we've started talking about for this coming uh this coming fall uh we both got you've got more points than i, I do. got 13 points yeah and i've got about nine or ten i think 15. so i'll have 10 or 11 13 yeah, yeah. so we're oh. thinking about taking taking and, and trying to put in because i know um there in Red Oak, that's that's the toughest tag to draw, and I think it's taken eight, nine, ten points somewhere right around there now to draw. Right. So we're going to try to. We're thinking about it this year, seriously. At least um, a nine and ten. I know a couple people who have ten that did not draw this year. So yeah, it's very difficult to get a tag up here, which is ridiculous because we have bears everywhere. Yeah, I don't get that. That we can do another podcast on that. <laughs> yeah, we can. And, you know, that, that's definitely I'm a whole. Totally rant about that. <laughs> right, right, right. Exactly. That you know, it's kind of funny that you talk to some people and they'll tell you there's a, a bear around every every tree we got, and other people, no, we don't. Yeah, it, it's it's very it's. Well, up there in Clubland. I mean, she has to, you know, it's, we're preaching to the choir right now about this, but that's, uh, it, like I said, it's a topic for another day. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> and, uh, you know, speaking of that, uh, I got a question here from uh, Tim C.S. Uh, are these books approved for public schools? Oh, well, that's a good question. Okay. Oh, <laughs> I do know that a few schools have bought them. Um, I know that a few libraries have bought them, um, and they have them for the kids to read. 
I've been asked by our local school to come in and read to one of the classes. So I don't know if there's like a specific approval that you have to go through for the public school system, but I do know that depending on the school, they're very okay with it. Okay, good. Good to hear, especially here in Michigan. Yeah, Michigan doesn't care. Northern Michigan, anyway, doesn't really care about hunting books. <laughs> right, right. Well, I, I hate to even bring this up or even go there, but has there been any negativity? Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, not, nothing specific, but, I mean, we see the antis that, that try to hammer people. And, and I just wondered if you, you have had any conversations or any things, you know, said or sent to you uh, via social media or email that's that's been negative on these. Yeah, it hasn't been horrible, but yeah, at least once a week I get something on one of my social media platforms from an anti-hunter, either sharing my stuff and trying to get people to send me hate mail or, you know, telling me that they wish I was dead. Or my dad is a, like I said, is a big hunter and he got a really nice wolf last year that I shared on I think it was my Facebook page, and um, somebody sent me a death threat saying he was going to kill me. Yeah. And so I don't, you don't take that stuff too seriously, but it's it does get annoying after a while. <laughs> sure, right on. Well, very, very much so, it gets annoying. Well, look at you last last week, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Last week and the week before, I uh, I had a couple dealings with some idiots out there that I had to kind of take the switch to and beat off the bushes you know and get them away from us but uh yeah i don't think you've got anything to worry about you you've got some law enforcement around you i think they'll take care of that <laughs> yeah i i my my husband's pretty good at protecting us out here and even though I, nobody's ever going to show up they're big no. man over the computer screen but you know they're cowards in real life <laughs> right keyboard warriors oh, exactly that's, that's funny living in, living in the basement well, I'll tell you what, let's step outside, let's take our last break. We come back. I want to give you an opportunity to talk about where we can find these books, the cost of them. And, uh, and then we got to ask her our favorite interview questions. Yeah, that's right. The, the questions we ask all of our, our guests and hunters. She has no clue what we're going to ask. That's right. So, all right, we'll step outside. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back. Last segment of the show, and we're still sitting here talking about outdoor books, outdoor things, women in the outdoors, all good stuff with Shasta Sutton. Um, now, I got both these books at the same time, Shasta. If if somebody was wanting to order one or two, uh, how would they go about doing that? There's a couple different ways. Um, you can get both my books on my website, which is whitetailpress.com. Um, you can either buy them individually. I think they're $11.95 each, or you can buy them as a set. If you buy the set, it is both of them for $20. Okay. Or you can get them on Amazon if you feel more comfortable ordering on Amazon. Or um, also on Dr. Deer's website. Oh, Dr. Deer. He sells them, too. Okay. What a guy. I did not know that. Very nice. And if you buy it off of Amazon, make sure to leave her a review to help her out. That's, that would be fantastic. Exactly. <laughs> Just like we do with Jerry Lambert. Absolutely. Now, are the books selling real well? I mean, how long have these been out? I've seen these last year, I believe, when the first time yeah. I came across them. White's first whitetail has been out since I believe 2014. Grace goes bow hunting was 2016. Okay. And then my next book will be coming out next year. 2018. 2018. I'm seeing a pattern here. I do. Yep. Yes. Yeah, see a pattern. <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to tell us about that book? Have you got a title yet, or maybe uh, what you're writing about, or do you want to hold that close to the vest? No, I can. Um, it's going to be a fishing book, or it is a fishing book. Okay. It's actually the illustrators right now, and it's going to have both Wyatt and Grace in it. And it's going to be about two kids, basically getting kids away from electronics and teaching them about fishing and enjoying nature. Right on. Mm -hmm. That's nice. I like that. That's awesome. Hey, can I ask you a question about the process of writing a book? Sure. Okay, so you wrote the script for the book, and then you send it to the illustrator, and then they draw for you? Yeah, normally, well, what, what really happened was I wrote the manuscript, I sat on it for a long time, and then I started trying to figure out how to publish it, and so I did the traditional route, which is where you send it to publishing companies, and then if they accept it, they find you an illustrator. But I did that, and I got 
rejection letter after rejection letter, all saying that I was evil for trying to teach kids how to hunt. <laughs> oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> that they do not endorse hunting, they are not okay with hunting, don't ever send them a manuscript again. And so that's why I started my own publishing company, because my publishing company is just fine with hunting. <laughs> I, was just a, <laughs> I was just about to say, if that doesn't point you in a direction of something to open, your right. own publishing yeah. company, right? No kidding, especially so, for children's books. <laughs> okay, so, so, so then you came up with that decision, and then you found somebody to, to draw for you then? Yes, and then I had to find an illustrator, um, which was almost as difficult as finding a publishing company because I had a few people that I was, they were great until they found out what the manuscript was about. Because these were people that, you know, from all over Michigan, and some were not okay with hunting, and they decided they didn't <laughs> want to illustrate my book. <laughs> nice. Oh, and, and by finding a great artist, his name is Marvin Teeples. He lives downstate as well, and he's fantastic. That's awesome. Uh, also, we can find your books in the QDMA website in their shop, according to Luke Sinton. Yes, yes, I forgot about that. Sorry, <laughs> thanks, husband. Um, you can also get them on QDMA. They are endorsed by the QDMA, and they are available online as well. Oh, that's good. That's good. that's awesome. So. Is it time for questions? Uh, I, I, I think we've covered everything of how to get the books, how she's come about. And I think it's a little bit of our time now okay. to ask her a few questions. Go ahead. I'll, Cause, I'll, cause, we'll, let's check in first. we, we got to ask all these questions. We get to ask now questions of you. Uh, one of the very first questions is, obviously you're an outdoor person. What's your favorite uh, big game recipe? Hmm. Probably venison tacos. That's different. I've not heard that venison before. Venison tacos. Nobody's ever said that. We, no? get, we have a lot of venison out here, believe it or not. And no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and venison tacos is probably what I make the most of. Okay. It's a simple meal until you do the dishes. There you go. There you it, go. it is a lot of dishes, but it, it is very simple, and I like it. Okay. Well, well, speaking of food, when you go to the deer blind or to the, deer, the tree stand or the elk, or the elk woods... <laughs> and you pack in your backpack. What is your go-to snack that you have to have on the when you get out in the woods? Oh, this is so boring. My husband's gonna laugh because I'm a I'm a very clean eater. So it'd probably yeah. be an apple, a bottle of water, and maybe one of and maybe some almonds. <laughs> okay. No, that that's she. See, she an apple. The 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 squirrels will love the almonds. That's right. Well, my daughter, not my daughter, probably wouldn't go hunting with you because I I did take an apple one time, and when I took a bite into it, she turned and looked right at me. And she's like, "Seriously, Dad? Really? Are you that loud in the blind?" <laughs> yeah. Oh, she started she started giving me evil eye, and I had to put it away. She wouldn't let me eat it. <laughs> they are loud. Bananas work a lot better, but they get all mushed up in your backpack. I've learned that from from experience. Especially so. especially when they get cold. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's, 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 yeah. Bananas are okay, but you gotta get at them right away. Right. Right. Okay, so we now you know your favorite dish. We know your favorite snack. So you're on your way traveling somewhere, either to the woods or you're traveling down the highway. What would be, like, your favorite type of music that you're going to listen to? Favorite? Yeah. Everyone. I listen to everything. Um, hmm. I don't know if you guys have Sirius XM. Yep. Mm -hmm. My new favorite station is Pop Rocks. It's all the rock songs from, like, the 90s to today. <laughs> no? <laughs> no? No, 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 no. I, I totally understand. I know where you're coming from. No, nope, it's my glory days. It's uh, it's good music. Exactly. That those are your glory days, just like mine is the eighties. Yeah. Yeah. yeah well, more the early two thousands. Yeah. Well, man, that leaves me in the late seventies, early eighties. Jeez, I feel old. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, looking back, I mean, you told us a little bit about your background, but. When you look back on all the hunting or fishing or camping or whatever it is you've done in the outdoors, what what's the one thing that really sticks in your mind as far as a trip, hunting trip, or game that you've taken, and, and why? Why why does that memory so vivid? Oh, that one's easy. My husband and I went on a hunting trip last year to Croatia, wow. and we went to this tiny little remote island in the Adriatic Sea and hunted fallow deer, and it was the 
probably one of the best experiences of my life. Wow. What? It, and I, I assume that you were successful on that hunt? We both were, yeah. Okay. We, with the package, you got one trophy fallow deer and you got one coal fallow deer. And so he got the trophy because I love him, and I got the coal. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And it yeah. worked out great, yeah. And, and, I, and I bet you the next hunt they go on, I know who's going to get the trophy. Right, right. Yeah, absolutely. Right, that's, that's a pretty good bet, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> See? Well, what, what part of that hunt sticks in your mind? I mean, what, what's the one thing that you really remember about that and, and what? that draws that attention to you oh it was the whole experience we stayed in a 15th century hunting lodge and we were all alone with just a couple other hunters on this remote island and we would hunt in the morning and then we would go down and swim in the sea during the middle of the day and then we'd hunt again in the afternoon it was just it was really amazing you felt like you were back you know in the 17 or 1800s because there was no electricity it was just an amazing experience. That's cool. Oh, okay, so so you're hunting and swimming. What was the temperature? <laughs> oh, it was in the 80s. Really? Okay. Mm -hmm. This just had me. <laughs> Scent control, man. <laughs> wow. <laughs> you see salt, right? Right. I that's I, no. I don't know if I can hunt in temperatures like that. Well, tip, you know, I'm, I'm here. We are sitting here in November, December. We're in December yeah. now, and she's talking about hunting. So I'm thinking hunting, and then she's telling me about swimming, and I'm right. like, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it's a September hunt. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. It's, and there, you're on the ocean, so it, there's always a nice breeze. But it was warm. It was definitely warmer than any time I've ever hunted. Okay. Wow. Right. That's awesome. Well, one last question, and, and we'll let you go for the evening. But uh, looking back, I mean, I think I already know the, the answer is it, probably your mother. But, but who got you involved in hunting for the first time? And do you remember your first hunt? My first hunt? Well, it was both my mom and my dad. And um, you, where I shot the animal or where I just went hunting? Just the, fir the first memory you have. What, what's your best memory of that? Yeah. Okay. So I think the first hunt that stands out in my mind was going elk hunting with my mom. And my dad had set us up, and I wasn't hunting yet. I was just going along with her. And I just remember I was pretty young. I was probably only about eight but I re remember my dad took us out to this point and showed us where to sit, and then he was going to do an elk drive to us. It was in the evening, and I it was right before sunset, and we were sitting on this rock overlooking this mountain, and I just remember looking at her and thinking, this is such a magical experience that I get to share with her. And, I mean, at eight years old, you don't think that stuff at eight years old. And so right. ever since then, I remember whenever I think about hunting with my mom, that's the moment I think about. That's cool. That is way cool. Yeah, that's awesome. And then we found out a mountain lion was stalking us, and it wasn't so much fun. It got scary. But <laughs> <laughs> and on the hindsight of 2020, <laughs> right? Oh. Okay, so isn't that isn't that something? Now you just mentioned that. Isn't that one of the as a hunter one of the weirdest things, like either mountain lion or wolves or something, when you start to realize, wait a second. I'm yeah. the prey here. When the hunter becomes the hunter. Right. right? And is like, well, time out here. Yeah. What am I doing? Yeah. Especially mountain lions. Those things, they're so stealthy. You don't even know they're there until you look behind you and you see some glowing eyes. Or you go behind you and you see the footprints were like 12 feet behind you. You're like, how did I not see this thing? Right. <laughs> it's scary. That's one thing I, I, I say to myself is a mountain lion you will never hear get you. Yeah. You, yeah. You'll be gotten before you know it. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I remember Donnie Vincent talking about that uh, outdoor filmmaker. He yeah. was talking about, you know, it's such a he he equated to a magical moment as well about the hunter becoming a hunted. It was such a spiritual type thing, but it's spooky but cool all at the same time, right? So definitely spooky. Yeah, now especially with all the wolves out there, you go out west and it's very common to get <laughs> surrounded by a pack of wolves. Well, this summer I was out there camping. And there was wolves howling all around us. And I had my little son. I'm like, do not get more than two feet away from me. It's, right. It gets scary. Right, right, absolutely. I tell you what, when I'm in the UP and they start firing off like that, yeah, it, mm -hmm. it, it gets you right up the back of the neck. And you're like, hold on a second. Here. Get your attention right. Oh, yeah. All right. Well, I'll tell you what, we've, we've taken enough of your time this evening. I appreciate you sitting down and, and talking with us. Sorry we had such a rough start to the interview. <laughs> oh, that's okay. Thank you guys for having me on. Oh, not a problem. And uh, once again, uh, everybody go over to Amazon, check these books out. Um, great stocking stuffers, great uh, gift for the kids. And, and like Shasta was saying, you don't have to be 
in a third grade reading level, it can be, you know, in, uh, your, your younger children, you can read to them, you know. And, uh, you know, the, the one thing, before I do go, I want to say the one book, I, th I think it's the book with Grace, in the back you put a place to put your photograph. Oh, both books have it. Uh, I think I just did that with the Grace one. Just in the Grace one, yeah, where you can write your own story. Yeah, Encourage. yeah. There's a spot to put, post a picture of your first hunt and your, your write your own first story of your first deer hunt. That is awesome. That is mm -hmm. awesome. All right. Well, we appreciate you taking time sitting down with us, guys, gals. Go over Amazon.com, WhitetailPress.com, QDMA, QDMA. It's in their bookstore as well. And, and uh, Doctor Deer, Doctor Deer, absolutely. So. And I'm on social media all over the place. Facebook page. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. What's all your of it. What's your Facebook page? It's, uh, sh ooh, what is it? Shasta uh, sitting at Whitetail Press or whitetailpress.com. Uh, uh, see, she goes there all the time. But <laughs> it's, it's like it's like asking your phone number. What's your phone number? No, I just, oh, oh hold on. Yeah, Shasta sitting at Whitetail Press. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, would, if anybody's, uh, they can't find any of those, those things real handily, let us know. We'll make sure we get you to the right place so you can get these books in your hands and get them uh, in time. Is shipping time now, we can get them in time for Christmas still? Oh, definitely. I usually ship everything the same day. So, okay. and especially if you're in Michigan, you can usually get it within two days. Right on. Okay. All right. Well, we thank you for sitting down with us, and uh, hopefully, we'll, we'll chat again sometime real soon. Sounds great. Thanks again. Thank All right. you. Take care. So, you gonna order yours today? Tomorrow. Tomorrow. Okay. I think tomorrow I will be making a stop at uh, Amazon. All right. I will. Uh, Definitely get them on. Uh, I will send them to my cousins. White and Grace. White and Grace. That is that is cool. It, it's bizarre. I, I tell you what. I saw that and it just it. And I had to tell Deb that. I said, guess what? This is really weird. But I'll I'll get them and I'll and I'll send it to them and uh, and definitely on Amazon. Try to give them a review if you order off Amazon because it just that helps their rating. That helps their rating and it helps them out. Yeah, absolutely. So. Interesting night, interesting weekend. We got to see Santa this weekend. We did. We got to see Santa. We got, uh, you know, uh, it was a good time. You know what What I liked? And then I pointed out to you, we watched those kids uh, spying Santa. That was and so cool. The, it, you know what? It was good to see the line of the people to bringing their kids in to see Santa. The lady brought her dog in to see Santa. And it was just cool to see people getting in line, getting excited for the holidays. And but the two little boys, they they were like, they were peeking around the sign, just kind of like this, like, and and pointing like, and they oh, were there, he is, right they, there, that's it, Santa. Yep, yeah. and and the little girl that came in the door with the dad, and she wouldn't go no further, and they're peering around us because we were sitting down right there, right. And, and he's trying to tell her, and and then okay, we're gonna go see Santa, and mm -hmm. the world was good again. But yeah, that was awesome. You know, this time of year, I just love it. Um, you know, it, it's it truly is a magical time of the year. Just uh, being around friends and family, and uh, you know, sharing gifts and just just the good cheer that's out there. You know, there's there's so much junk in the world anymore that uh, you know you can get depressed real fast, looking right? at stuff and, and hearing stuff and reading things. And but I tell you what, you, you put a smile on your face. Read these two. Read these two books. Absolutely. Yep. You know, even as a, as, as a, from zero to eighty-five years old, you read these books, it puts a smile on your face. Yep. And it kind of also kind of grounds you about our, our up-and-coming youth. It does. You know, and that, that's the other thing. You know, getting back to you know Shane Mahoney and what he said. This this is another way to get our kids involved. Uh, you know, start them young, start reading them, and that's what I'm going to do with these. I'm going to read to Ben. You know, uh, aka Buck Snort, my my grandson. And uh, yeah. You know, we're we're going to start him right away. And, and get him into the outdoors, you know, much like I did when I was a kid. I mean, I remember I was four or five going into the woods with my dad and, you know, squirrel hunting, uh, tagging along with them. Yep. I used to tag along. They'd go pheasant hunting, and I'd tag along, and we'd go to farms and do that stuff. Yep. And, you know, then before you know it, I had a bow, a little bow and arrow, and then I had a BB gun and shot a window out. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Got in trouble. Over <laughs> the weekend, you, you shoot your, your deer's eye out. Yeah, well, no, I didn't shoot no deer's eye out. Not yet. Not yet. No, no. He's making reference to our video. If you haven't seen our Christmas video, folks, go go onto our Facebook page here below the live stream if you're watching, and uh, check out our 2017 Cabela's uh, Christmas wish list. Yeah, it was fun. It, it was a hoot. I, I love doing that, and uh, there is a theme to it. There's a theme to it, and you watch it all the way to the end. Like I said, it's it's a little longer than last year, but... Uh, 
we throw a couple good little things in there along the way yes, just did. to have a little fun. So, we did. So, um, anything else, Shaken? Uh, no, uh, just uh, kind of heading down that world of uh, you're going to be heading up north this weekend. Yep. Uh, doing some muzzle loading. Yep. Um, other than that, I'm just gearing down towards the end of the year here. And mm -hmm. Speaking of the end of the year, December 30th is a Saturday. December 31st is Sunday. We will not be live streaming on Chris on New Year's Eve. No, we won't be. <laughs> that will be a negative. You know, and actually, looking at that, if I'm not mistaken, Christmas Eve is going to be the same way. I mean, you know, look pull, at, pull, look up, at, pull up the calendar. Look at the calendar here real quick. Huh? We might need to make a decision on that as well. We, we already made one. Uh, right. Uh, yeah. Christmas Eve is, is Sunday. I don't think we'll be live streaming Christmas Eve night. Oh, I don't think so either. So the looks like, It looks like it will be on Saturday. And it'll probably be early because I do have people coming over that day for Christmas. Right. So we, we usually pull it off early anyways. And uh, the same thing on uh, New Year's Eve. Yep. So we may or may not be live streaming. We will do a podcast, but uh, we, we might not be live streaming. But we might be. You never can tell. We'll... Men of mystery. That's right. Well, and then uh, we're working through some some things here with, with new gear we got in the studio, uh, working on a few bugs. So uh, we'll get that stuff taken care of as well. Absolutely. And and stay tuned. December thirtieth, is that when we're going to try to? Well, well, yeah. We'll see how that shakes out. We'll know more later in the week. We'll we'll let you know something here. We got some stuff coming down the pipe. Got something brewing, and uh, we'll work through that. But uh, other than that. That'll do it for us this week. If you got any questions, fire them off here real and, quick at and, us. And Deb says yes. Yes. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. She agrees, huh? <laughs> and Andy Eberhard says, what am I going to do while I'm at work? Oh, he's crying. Oh, Andy. You're going to have to watch the previous week's episode again. Yeah. So Go, go into some back episodes and enjoy those and, you know. Right on. All right, so for those of you on the live stream, uh, if you want to hang with us here for just a second, for those of you on the, on the podcast, we're going to sign off right now and wrap it up. So that will do it for us this week, folks. As we always like to say in the Up North Journal, if you're out on the water in the woods, shoot straight and be safe. Until next week on the Up North Journal. <laughs>